So we're gonna get quiet. We're gonna relax right where we're at. I'm gonna focus on our breath. Relax, release, and let go. Pay attention to our breath, just noticing how it works. But as we breathe in, we are filled. And as we breathe out, we just naturally relax. We breathe in, we receive the gift of life. And as we breathe out, we give the gift of love. <clears throat> Say to yourself, I am extending love. I am extending love. I open my heart and allow the love of God to flow. This love flows from my heart and returns to flow into my heart. My heart is a pump delivering not just blood around my body, but also delivering compassion to myself and others. Today, I allow my heart to care, to care about people, even people who are fearful, angry, jealous, overpowered by addiction, arrogant, proud, miserly, selfish. <clears throat> My heart filters out any fear of finding these unattractive things in myself. And it also filters out my judgments of people who exhibit them as well. I no longer have to be afraid of pain. I can open myself and I can open my heart and allow that suffering and the suffering of others to be felt and then released. The pain softens and purifies me and then makes me more loving and kind. I will not cling to suffering but rather I will experience it, bless it, 
and send it on its way. I extend love. I allow the love of God to flow through me, from me, and return unhindered to me. And we say amen and amen. So, we have been focusing for the past uh, six weeks, now seven weeks, on relationships. And today, we are concerned with self-support. We've been using the uh, 12 traditions. Uh, <clears throat> as a model this is the, these are the instructions that um, and when I do a, a wedding ceremony I have some instructions that I give um, the bride and groom uh, generally we meet first and we talk about you know what what it's all about and I I do uh, these uh, ceremonies uh, I allow people to customize them in any way that they would like they can change I give them a you know kind of a general outline and then they can do whatever they want with it except for this one thing they can't change the 12 instructions they can change anything else but the 12 instructions and the instructions are based on 12 traditions because the traditions in the recovery programs are designed uh, to, uh, to uh, address the relationships within and without. And there are principles that if we follow them, we find that we'll have harmonious relationships. So the, the first instruction is keep the common welfare in your heart. For the joy of the one depends upon the harmony of the two. And don't we know it? And then we take no authority over each other. Nobody has to be the boss, okay? I mean, really. We can each have different responsibilities, but nobody has to be the boss. I know that for some of us, the way we grew up and the models that we saw and, and even the models that we continue to see, it seems as if somebody should be the boss. But really, that's counterproductive. Not going to work out very well. So... We take no authority over each other, but in all things, we surrender to the loving presence in our hearts, allowing that to be our guide. So this is the idea of when two or more are gathered in my name, there I am also in the midst of them. The, the, uh, the surrender of personal agenda, and uh, on, the, uh, on the sign outside, this, the second instruction, is conscious unity. It's deciding that we're going to come together in mind and make decisions uh, in, that, in that manner. And, w of course, always considering the common welfare. So then the third one is accept one another without conditions. The one not trying to change the other. So yes, I know, you have, a, you have a loved one, maybe a romantic involvement, perhaps just somebody in your family, who you like a lot of things about them. But there's at least one thing that you would really like to change. And you're, you've thought, if only we could change that one thing. You can't change other people. We cannot change other people. We, we can change. Other people can change. But we can't make them change. 
And so we accept them as they are. And, and generally, by doing that, by, by making the acceptance, we actually make it easier for them to make any needed change. We actually in interfere with the change if we try to enforce it ourselves. We, we, um, we promote secret behavior. So the fourth one was make not the decisions for the other person, but be self-governing and allow your partner to be likewise. So autonomy. I'm going to be autonomous. I can do anything I want to do as long as it doesn't harm somebody else. And everybody else can do anything that they want to do as long as it doesn't harm somebody else, including me. And just being inconvenienced is not harm. My partner deciding that they're going to spend time with their friend is not harm. Unless it interferes with something that we've already planned, right? I mean, there's some common sense that enters into this thing. But just because my friend wants to spend time with another friend does not mean that they have abandoned me. Sometimes there's a panic involved in these things. It's okay. So the fifth was to establish a common purpose, a common purpose. So in a relationship, we think about this. In a relationship we have, there's a purpose for the relationship. We'll just talk about if it's a, if it's a friendship, we have common interests perhaps that we share. Uh, we have um, uh, mutual support. And so the, here's, the, the, so this is then, I mean, you may think of some others, but that's the purpose then. The purpose of the relationship is to support each other and to enjoy common interests. If perhaps that friendship turns into a romantic relationship, you don't want to lose this mutual support. You don't want to lose the ability to share common interests. You want to add to it. You don't want to, like if, it, if the relationship should change, you don't want to like lose the good thing from the previous relationship. We add them. But there's a common purpose and that purpose should be linked somehow to service. Service to each other and then together in the relationship, the idea of as a unit being of service to others. So really the purpose is about love. The purpose is about, the, the, the general purpose is about extending love to each other and then out from the two or three or however many there are to others. And, to, and then the sixth is not to allow the issues of the ego to divert us from the mission. So we, money, property, prestige, issues of the ego. So we know, and this has been said many times, but it's important that most arguments in romantic relate in, in, in marriages anyway, are about money. Most of the problems come somewhere about, and, 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 and a lot of times it's about not having enough, but many times it's about how to disperse what we have, what it should be spent on, what it shouldn't be spent on, and all these different things. Well, this is a side issue. Yes, I think it's important. Every, I, 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 let me say that I think budgets are useful. I think that budgets are a good thing. They should be like done together, decisions made together, and then do our best to stick to them. But there, that's a secondary concern to the relationship, and it, and it needs to be. These issues of money, property, prestige need to be off to the side. And uh, the prestige, this is an interesting area in, in a lot of relationships that you say, well, I don't know anything about prestige, and not, I don't have, we don't have prestige issues in our marriage. And I would just ask you to consider the prestige of being right. There's something attached to that. And there is, there is something just so deliciously perverted about standing on this, on this position of I am right. I am right. And it's like, I know I'm right and I know they're wrong and I'm going to hold to this position because I know I'm right. Well, there's a famous question that we've studied in the Course in Miracles, and it says, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Because it's, and, and, and then you say, well, I'd be happy to be right. 
but to release this need to be right because it's all about judgment then if i if i i'm 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 just sure of the rightness of my position and the wrongness of my partner's position, that's suffering. And it causes conflict. So we let it go. And today we're going to talk about self-support, and that is the idea in the instruction, the seventh instruction in the marriage ceremony is shoulder your share of the burden. But be not afraid to ask for help. So, and this is, goes along with the seventh tradition, which says that we ought to be fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions. And when the tradition is talking about outside contributions, it's talking about interfering contributions. It's talking about taking something from someone else or some other entity that actually has the potential to interfere with the purpose of service, that we get other people involved in our stuff. So for the individual, this idea of self-support means that I'm going to do the things that need to be done by me. Now, how do I figure out what needs to be done by me? There's a number of things that go into it. First of all, I need to have an understanding of my own talents and abilities. I need to know what it is, what, what I bring to the game. What do I bring to the table? What are, what are the things that I do that I'm good at that I can offer to the relationship for the benefit of everybody involved? So I should have an idea about what, and actually being self-supporting means that if there's someone else in the relationship that is better at a certain thing, it would probably be best if I let them take that responsibility without having to worry about any prestige issues of somehow I'm less than because I'm not good at that particular thing. If we have someone in the house who's really good with numbers and knows how to put a budget together and that kind of thing, well, let's let them do it. Let's let them do it. And, and, and then the other part of this is you know, when we get into a situation that we can't do it by ourselves, we have to be willing to ask for help. And this goes back to the, the initial surrender that we talked about in the first step. The idea that I am going to surrender my ego to the power of God within me and all around me that this is like the basis I'm gonna surrender so I'm saying I need help and I look for the help and this is like really important in the relationship because part of being self-supporting is to offer the help that is needed to someone else in the relationship that's just part of it so in other words if I decide I'm gonna to be totally self-sufficient and not allow anybody to help me I'm actually cheating the other people in the relationship out of their opportunity to be of service to me. And the fact of the matter is, I can't. I actually can't do everything by myself. The fact is that I have to get cooperation from other people no matter what. And in, we, we have a myth, there's a myth running around that we've discussed before, and it's the idea of the self-made man or the self-made woman. It's impossible. Everybody needs cooperation. Everybody needs help. Now, some people trick others into helping them. Some people manipulate others into helping them. Some people force others into helping them, but they still had to have the help. So there is no such thing because no, because no man is an island. We are all connected. And so we all need help. And so this, what this principle says is, let me do what is mine to do. Let me contribute what is mine to contribute, and then let me allow others to contribute what is theirs. So we see this get out of balance many times, is that especially when we begin to get a mindset of, I, we, when we start to realize that giving service is the path to fulfillment, sometimes we give the wrong service. Sometimes we give too much. Sometimes we actually, uh, contribute what we shouldn't be contributing. So what we say here is that proper service is not doing things for people that they need to do for themselves, that they should be doing for themselves. Proper service is doing the right thing for the right reason at the right time. 
And so sometimes what that means is when it looks like somebody's in trouble, sometimes our service is to just give them to God and allow them to feel the consequences of their actions. Get out of the middle. Get out of there. Stop rescuing them. Step back. Watch what happens. But extend love. So a kind of a different picture than just going around and rescuing everybody and then being resentful about it. Give them love and get out of the way. So natural consequences. This is like really quite a concept. It, it works with kids. Just natural consequences, right? So we said last week, we said, you know, if, if, the, if a child goes and burns their hand on the stove, the natural consequence is they got pain for burning their hand on the stove. That's how they learn the lesson. They burn their hand on the stove. You don't break their arm on top of it just to like kind of like uh, cement the lesson. It's a consequence, right? So, so you think about any behaviors that people are doing. If, if you have some responsibility for them, allow them to feel the natural consequence, but you don't have to heap it on. Consequence is the consequence. Just let it happen. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what it actually is, especially with kids. But if we get quiet, it'll come to us. You know, here's one of the issues is reacting with anger, of course, makes it not good. A lot of times we react with anger and then do the thing for the person. But we're mad the whole time we're doing it. Oh, I'll just do it myself. Oh, just get in there and, and, and do it, right? Well, no. Let them do it. They can do it. They really can. We have to have confidence that they can do it. And because our confidence in them, that they can do it, is like this great gift. Because I'm saying to you, I know you can do this. I know you can do this, and it's your responsibility, I'm gonna let you do it. Now, one of the things about service and self-support is, I really, like to, I, I really like the idea of when somebody asks me for something, if it is within my 